Well, I'm not sure about where you live, but here where I live, it's all about the back-to-school sales and getting ready to send the kids back to school. So I thought we ought to make the dolls some back-to-school supplies for the next couple of weeks. So this week, we've got three projects. We're going to make some folders, we're going to make some pencils, and we're going to make some erasers. So stay tuned and see how easy and fun these projects are. All right, an item on just about every back to school list I've ever seen is an eraser. So we're gonna make, I'm gonna make the dolls just a stereotypical pink eraser. Um, I've got some pink clay. This happens to be Dusty Rose from Sculpey 3. Any pink clay, it doesn't matter. And I've rolled it out on my pasta machine at the very thickest setting, and then I've doubled it. So I've got two layers that are cut here. I've cut one edge off, and now I'm gonna cut a strip. I'm going to cut it approximately a quarter inch wide because this is about three-fourths of an inch wide. All right. Now I'm going to cut at an angle. I'm holding my knife at an angle. And now I'm going to go down to where it looks about right. And since these erasers come in lots of sizes. I mean there are small ones and if your clay sticks take some cornstarch. Ah, there's my brush. I have a mess on my table. I was going to clean my table up but I didn't get it done. This is just a blush brush from Dollar Tree. And I'm brushing the sides of my knife. Just a tiniest bit I don't want to leave visible powder, cornstarch on there. I just want enough cornstarch that it prevents this from sticking. Now, I'm going to cut. And I think I can get one more. Oops, maybe. Did that one work? Yeah, pretty much. So now, and then kind of smush them a little bit. We have three pink erasers for the dolls. So I'm going to cut the rest of this clay into erasers. I'm going to bake it at 275 degrees for about 10 minutes. When I come back to do the next tutorial, I'll show you how the erasers turned out. All right, so here are the erasers I came up with. So we've got quite a few erasers for the dolls to use. If you've got an eraser, I think the next thing you need is a pencil. I'm going to make some yellow ones today. But obviously you can make them any color you want. I may make some more later and show in a photo of some fancier ones. I'll put a picture of those in the blog if I get them done. But this is what we're going to do. Now this actually took me two colors of paint to get the paint the way I wanted it. I couldn't find this color anywhere. If you can match the color, great, go for it. What I found, and I need two coats of paint anyway, a coat of yellow, and I'm using just, it's just called yellow, covered with a coat of bittersweet orange, and these are both ceramic coat, makes a really good color. I've got a dowel, and I'm going to paint most of this dowel. Let's see, it is, does it say what it is? Is it, it says it's made in the U.S. This is an eighth inch dowel. And this is going to be hard to show on camera. I probably should have moved to my other table. I'm going to show you a portion of what I'm doing. So we're going to find a lid and put out some of this yellow paint. And by leaving the, this part with the sticker, I don't like to use this part of the dowel that the price tag has been on because I can never get the sticky off and it makes the paint turn out weird. But this gives me a grip. So off, I'm going to start painting off here on camera, but off camera I'm going to paint down just to that spot. So this is pretty simple. 
I mean, we're going to paint. We are just going to paint the dowel first in yellow. Now one thing that would be really cool and to make kind of a glittery pencil, I know when my, uh, well, I may only paint half of this. I'm Yeah, I think on second thought, I'm going to paint half of this yellow, and then I'm going to paint the rest of it with some random bright color, and I'll come back and show you what we are going to do. Yeah, I think this is enough yellow. I didn't need nearly that much paint out. All right, I'm going to go off. Oh, do I have a brush? I don't even have to go off camera. I have some dazzling metallics. Do I have something to put this in? This is what happens when I start doing things, you know, and come up with new ideas. I'm going to use a purple paint and do, I've got a brush sitting here. Do the rest of this in purple. Let's see if I can do this. There. So I'm going to make yellow pencils and purple pencils. So I'm going to finish painting this off camera. And when I come back, we'll put the second coat of paint on this end, and we'll do something else on this end. All right, so the yellow and the purple are both dry, so I'm going to put another coat of paint, this time the bittersweet orange, over the yellow. I painted most of the rest of the of the dowel with the purple. I'm going to show you a couple of versions of things with that. I'm going to try and get this fairly smooth. all the way to the end. All right, now this paint will need to dry and then we'll come back and do the next step. All right, now that our paint is dry, we need to cut this up into, well, mostly dry. I had to do a touch up on a spot. I guess it's not dry yet. Okay, so now we need to do a, to cut this into pencil sized pieces. So what we need for this scale is a two and a half inch piece. So I'm going to cut just one or two here on camera, and then I'm going to go off camera and finish. So make a mark at two and a half, one at five, one at seven and a half, and one at ten. I'll get those cut. And what I'm using today to cut with is just my easy cutter. Use whatever you've got that will make a nice straight cut. Um, I've seen a lot. Of a couple of different people use dog claw trimmers for cutting dowels. They work really well and they don't flatten them or distort them at all. It's one of the problems you run into trying to cut dowels is that you, they're really easy to, to mess up. All right, I'm off camera. I'm going to continue to cut this up into two and a half inch pieces and then I'll be back. All right, so now it's time to put some erase. Well, first, yeah. Put some erasers on our pencils. So the first thing we need to do is choose an end and kind of get it ready. So figure out which end is best. Like that end has a little notch out of it, so I'm going to use this end for my eraser. Make sure it's flat and kind of round that top just a little bit. Now I've got some pink paint, any paint. This is called Lisa Pink. I think I got on clearance because it was being discontinued though. Let's just put a very small drop out because what we are going to do, I need a Q-tip, we're going to dip that end we just kind of round it off in there. And I don't need the Q-tip on this one. Sometimes I do. Let's see. I'm going to lay these just off the edge of my tray. So I'll do that again. Pick an end. Uh, probably that one. We just don't want a sh totally sharp edge on it. Okay. 
and by dipping it into that little pool of paint you get that line nice and straight what am I doing? <laughs> I lost my train of thought for some reason right in the middle of that. So that one's got a notch out of it. So we'll go to this end. We'll level it off. And we'll dip. And by going around a little more, you get a little taller. But you don't want it very tall. The erasers are not very big. Now we've got those purple pencils. So I thought what we would do is I went and found some lavender paint. Since usually the different colors of pencils have coordinated, I'm going to have to do some touch up there. All right, uh, let's see if we can fix that. And that's not quite as deep as I want it. Let me see if I can get this paint a little deeper. I want that eraser to come down a little further than I see that's doing. That's better. There, that's better. If you hear laughter in the background, that's my son in the next room. I think he's watching something on YouTube or Netflix. And being a 16 year old boy, he's very loud. There. Dip these again. Make sure that you have your eraser down at least as far as you want it to go. It doesn't have to be perfectly level, but you want it fairly level. That's better. That's a better size. The first one was okay. Now, I have lavender paint. Lavender, yeah. So we're going to do the same thing. Get some paint out on my tray. A little bit bigger pool because I have more pencils that color. And once again, we are going to... That one has some orange on it, but that's okay. Let's see if I can clean it off. And we're going to dip those in. There. And I'll put those over on the other side of my tray. And hopefully I won't run them into each other. So I'm just going to continue with this step until I get them all done. If you have a little like dot on the top, just poke it down in your tray to flatten it out. This paint is a little thicker, so it wants to make a peak on there, so. And those barely show, but that's kind of the idea. All right, well, I'm gonna do the last two, and when these get dry, I'll come back and we'll do the next step. All right, on two of these pencils, we are going to attempt to make glittery pencils. When my daughter was in school, she always loved glittery pencils. I have this LA Colors glitter polish, and it has a fairly small glitter to it. Uh, I don't. I think this was before they started actually putting the names on them. It, I've had it for several years, so. And all we're going to do, avoiding that part where we just painted the um, eraser on. Going almost up to it. We are going to paint these. And I'm only going to do two this way because this is going to be a little more fiddly than the others. It looks like I missed my paint there a little bit. Okay. Do one more. 
And then when this part dries, this nail polish doesn't take very long. This is a fairly quick drying polish. And I hope I'm not getting my head in the camera. All right, so those need to dry. And when those are dry, I'll come back and we'll do the next step. All right, we are almost done. Next, we're going to add on this little metal part. I don't know what it's called that holds on the eraser. I should know what that's called, but I don't. All right, for the yellow pencils, we're going to use silver paint. For metallic paint, if you've been watching my videos for very long, you probably know I always use Ceramicoat because it's opaque enough that you can do it with one coat. With the other brands, I have yet to find one that I don't need to undercoat it with something else. So, we need small brushes. And see if I can do this or if I've had too much coffee today. And if you find you've got pink paint on there from your eraser or anything else, just, you know, we'll, I'll fix it with some orange later. And just slowly turn the pencil. And it's probably not going to be perfect. But I don't think the dolls will complain. And you can go back and put a second coat on to get it more perfect. So we're going to, I'll do two of these and then I'll show you on the others. We're going to and this silver is a fairly new bottle, so let me show you the label again on it. Alright, I will come back and do the other two in a moment. The label on the metallics from Ceramcoat looks like this now. For the purple ones, I'm going to use gold because most, as I recall, most of my daughter's fancy pencils had gold parts on them. So I have another brush here. Why did I do that? And this is a really old, old bottle of paint. So the label will look like the other one, not like this. And Yeah, you are in. I am under camera. All right. And just go all the way around. There. I'm going to hang that off the edge and I'll do one of these that's not been glittered. And then off camera, I will finish this step. This one I'm making a little wider than I want to, but that's because I didn't have another brush like that. Alright, I'm going to finish these up. And when this paint is dry, which shouldn't take too long because there's not too much paint, I'll be back and we'll do the last couple of steps. All right, now we have a bunch of unsharpened pencils. I didn't go back and touch up my paint yet. I will do that later. But now if you want to have them not sharpened, what you could do is take like a Sharpie pen and very carefully just put a dot in the middle. But we're going to sharpen ours. In order to sharpen them, you're going to use a regular pencil sharpener, just like it was a real pencil. And you're just going to turn it carefully. Keep it fairly straight. And check it from time to time. And it doesn't need to be super, super sharp. 
now black paint. There's my black paint. I buy my black paint in a huge bottle because that's one of the colors I go through a lot. So I'm only going to do one right now because this is going to take a while. I'm just going to take your sharpened pencil and just dip it as far as you want to into the black paint. Let that dry after dropping it. Let that dry. And when they're all done, your dolls are going to have plenty of pencils to see them through the school year. We've got one more project today, so let me move to the other table and we'll get that one started. All right, now that the dolls have pencils and erasers, let's give them a folder so they can put some of that homework in here. We are going to start out with a piece of cardstock. I'm using a patterned cardstock. Uh, you can use just scrapbooking paper, you could use plain paper. I like this weight because it's easier to work with. It's firmer and it just it works better for me. It is seven inches across and five and five eighths inch this direction. Now, the seven inches this way, the five and five eighths inches this way. So if you have a directional design, you'll need to keep that in mind. We're going to score this. We're going to start, I've got the long side, the seven inch side right there, and I'm going to score at three and a half inches. That's right down the middle. Now, while it's still in this position, I'm scoring at one quarter of an inch from the end. Then I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to score one of the long seven inch sides at a quarter inch. This will be the top of our folder. So if you've got a design that has a definite top and bottom, you want to make sure that you place it correctly. And a quarter inch on this side. Now on the final side at the bottom edge, we are scoring at one and a half inches. We need to make the piece that folds up to form the pockets. Got my scoring board out of the way. I'm keeping my bone folder so I can use it. I'm going to score this first, fold this scoring line first, and I'm still off. Well, we're going to go with it. I'm a little bit off, but I have refolded this I don't know how many times. Score these, fold on these score lines. Now, I think I was a little bit off on my cutting because I'm off just a little bit. This one I can fix, however. Let me show you how to fix this if this happens. We only need to rescore one side. Let's trim off that piece that's a little bit too long here. Oops, there's a better knife. There. Now, this side will need to be rescored. Somehow I have been off. This is like my fourth time filming this, this thing, and I have mismeasured this mark every time. I don't know what I'm doing. All right a quarter inch from this new edge. There. Now, we'll fold in there. All right. Make sure that that's folding up even. There. All right. Now we're at, now we're in business. So this is how it's going to go together. So we have some trimming to do. We need to trim off. This is the part that's folding up. I'm going to cut it just a little bit past that mark and just a little bit up from there I'm cutting at an angle. This part in here doesn't even have to be even, it just wants to be less than a quarter inch. Now up here, slight angle, trim this off. This will cut down at the bulk at the different spots where you fold. Now, 
we need to fold this. This part that's going to fold over, we want to cut just a little tiny space. And at this end also. And now what I like to do is take my, I've got a, I think it's a half inch hole punch. I'm just going to slide it on just a little bit. I'm staying within that one and a half inch area. Cut a little shape. That will allow this to fold much easier. Now, we need some, oops, a sneak peek at next week's project. I need some clips. We are going to glue this now. This is Tombow Mono Liquid Glue, the Liquid Aqua Glue. Let's see, first we're going to put this piece down. This is just that short top edge. And this will need to be clamped. Try not to get glue out onto the outside because it will make a mark. This is not actually going to be glued. It will be held down by this little rim, which is why we didn't cut back very far. All right, fold this up, fold this over. And clamp. Put your clamps right on that edge. Now one advantage to this glue is once it dries it does not remain sticky at all. The other Tombow glue that I like to use for paper remains sticky. This one does not. And now this glue needs to sit until it dries, which won't take very long. When this is dry, I'll be back and we'll look and see our projects all together. All right, so this glue should be dry now. So I'm going to take all these clips off. And you'll need to kind of, it, it will need to be convinced it wants to stay folded. And I made another one, so now I already had one done. Get this off. All right, so now, what I've made so far here is I've made three folders, a bunch of pencils, including two. Why is there only one glitter one here? I think the cat took off with a glitter pencil. I'm going to have to look for that. Plus several erasers. I think the kid only needs one eraser though in their school bags. So there we go. That's the school supplies for this week. Next week, I have something else planned in the way of school supplies. So be sure and come back and see what that is. And by the end of this, we're going to have a whole mess of stuff to send the dolls back to school with. So be sure and check the blog post. I'm not sure. I'm thinking there might be a bonus project on the blog post. We'll see if I get it done or not by time to post it. And be sure and come back next week. Check us out on Facebook. The link is always in the description box below. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.